you for singing with us. I want to welcome all of you to the second night of Growing Together Conference. We're so happy to have all of you, and I see the faces are increasing every moment. We hope that you have a blessed night tonight as we go along with our program. So we're going to have a quick word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for bringing us all together to, to learn more, to learn from each other, and to fellowship with one another. Please be here with us. Send us your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. I have one quick announcement. And that is, for some of you, you heard it this morning, choir practice happens tonight after this meeting, right here. So if you are interested, even a little bit interested in joining the choir, I encourage you to come, try it out. If you don't like it, fine. But if you do like it, I think you really will, because I really do. So right after the meeting, we're going to meet here, right up at the front by the piano, and we're going to have our first choir practice. Hope to see you there. I want to share a quick Bible verse here from the book of Psalm, Psalms uh, 34. There is a Bible verse that is very commonly read, is verse 7. The angel of the Lord, yes, encamped round about them that fear him and delivered them. And what is the Bible verse that follows? Very good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Have you already seen that the Lord is good? Amen? Have you seen it? I hope that during this uh, convention you have seen that the Lord is good. It continues saying, blessed is the man that what? That trusted in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. Are we to be afraid of the things to come? No, we have chosen to trust in whom? In God, and he will provide for them that fear him. Him. May our hearts be fully in his arms and may our trust be in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 May God bless you. Thank you for that word, Prester. We have another announcement is uh, Wachita Hills here. They have an announcement they're going to do about their school and some exciting things that are happening there. So we're going to turn over time for them for a few minutes. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah, um, I just wanted to let people know about something that is very, it's just too good to not tell people about. <laughs> so um, we've been working for the last over 10 years at a school in southwest Arkansas called Washita Hills Academy, and they have a college too. So um, they are a school where the students study half of a day, and then the other half of the day, they work, and they're learning to enjoy how to, to work in different um, um, types of situations. A lot of them are in, in, the, in the gardening, in, in agriculture. They have uh, five greenhouses there, and um, they're learning how to do all those kinds of things. And this year in the college, they're going to be adding a new course of study, and that is to get a certificate in small engine repair. So if anyone here is interested in learning how um, to get a certificate in small engine repair and you can actually repair people's lawnmowers and all kinds of things, um, because that is a real need. So they're going to add that this year. Um, and I just wanted to find out if anyone wants a brochure and my daughter's going to help me pass them out. And if you don't, um, if you wanted to tell someone else about the brochures, they're on the brochure table over there. Um, the main thing is right now we need a farm manager. So at an agriculture convention, I'm just making an announcement. <laughs> Please, we've been praying for a farm manager for two years. If you feel impressed that God is leading you and you want to come visit, you can just see what it's like. And you might decide you want to stay because it's very nice and the people are very nice there. So I guess that's about all I had to say. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
Thank you, Wachita Hills. Uh, and so this is our, I'm gonna, anybody, so our national conference for at Agra is, will be happening in Glen Rose, Texas. So as we go through the weekend, you're gonna hear more about um, just kind of a highlight of, of things that are, that are gonna be happening in Texas. Much larger conference than this. This one will probably max out of probably around 200, maybe 275 on Sabbath. And uh, the conference in Glen Rose would be close to almost 1,000. So it's kind of a, this conference like on steroids. So just want to kind of give you guys a, 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 just a highlight of it. I'm going to introduce our speakers for this evening. Uh, Joubert Pierre, the Pierre family. They're going to be giving their testimony on how God led them over the years. And the title of their talk is It Takes a Village. And we know it does take a village. We're talking about this conference of all of us growing together and working together. And we can't do it by ourselves. We need each other. So I'm going to have a word of prayer. And then the next voice you hear will be from the Pierre family. So if you can bow your heads or if you can kneel as we approach the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are just so grateful, Lord, for all that we have learned today. We've seen some amazing things from our talented presenters. We've seen chainsaw class. We've seen hearing about just the microbiology of, of just building raised beds. Uh, Lord, we thank you for all that was presented. And as we move forward, Lord, we pray that the things that we learn doesn't leave our hearts and help us to... Uh, Continue, Lord, on this journey. Lord, we, by faith, we, we have come to this conference to learn and to come closer, not only to you, Lord, but to one another. So as um, our presenters speak this evening, we just pray that your Holy Spirit be with them. Give them the words to speak that we may be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, everyone. How have you been enjoying the conference so far? Great. Awesome, awesome. Well, we are so excited to be here today. Um, it feels like home. This was our home, actually, a few years ago. Our daughter um, grew up here, and I see some familiar faces, so it, it, it feels like home. So it's really great to be here. So I am Ariel Pierre, and this is? And I'm Juber Pierre. And we are so excited to share our story. Um, actually, we went, at Agra has been kind of familiar to us not too long ago. We went to the Kalakwa, um, Camp Kalakwa conference. How many of you guys were there? Anybody went to the Kalakwa? Okay, awesome. So we went there and had an amazing time. And so my husband is the chief operating officer um, for at Agra. So we've been really interested in just building an agricultural community. So that's what our talk is going to be about today. So um, now as we get this ready, uh, I just want to ask, how many of you guys are currently homesteading or gardening? Okay, so wonderful. So one really interesting thing is we had no desire, like I personally did not have a desire to garden. Um, all I knew about gardening was from what my parents um, did, and my parents are from Haiti. So the Caribbean culture, we grow what we used to eat because we can't find it here. And so I really thought it was a hobby for older people, and I had no interest in um, getting my hands dirty. I am a city girl, as we will talk about. I'm from Miami, Florida. So I really didn't want to have anything to do with gardening except for looking like taking Instagram words pictures 
So, um, but just to know the transition that our family has made, you'll see pictures of our family. You'll see pictures of my son waist deep in the mud and compost, um, having an amazing time. So I just look at those pictures and I think, wow, God has done amazing things. And if he can bring me a city girl to the country and start gardening and growing our own food, he can do that for anybody. So please pray for us. I'm not sure what's going on, but hopefully we can get this started. So the title of our talk is called It Takes a Village. Now, um, when you hear about homesteading and gardening, we definitely hear that it's about self-sufficiency, self-reliance. We're doing this on our own. We got this. You look up YouTube, and when you look for homesteading people, you usually see the person leaving the busy life and then having their own cottage in the woods, frolicking through the forest and all that good stuff. But honestly, um, that's not totally right. <laughs> and as we found out, there are snakes in the woods and there are coyotes that will eat you. So, yeah, it's been a, a very big transition for us. <laughs> don't forget the bears and yes, the bears. all the other challenges. Yes. But it is worth it. It is worth it. So we're ready now. We're good? Yes. <laughs> okay. I was buying my time, seriously. You did amazing. Okay, great. All right. So welcome again. This is Ariel, my lovely wife. My name is uh, Jew Bear. And we're joined here by also our parents, our loving parents that also share our homestead uh, with us. Um, Dr. is Clifford Laguerre and Joselle Laguerre. They're in the back there. <laughs> and our three little ones, Gabby, Jaden, and Caleb. Yes. All right. All right, so if you will bow your heads and close your eyes with me, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for just bringing us here safely together. We want to thank you for this conference, Heavenly Father, and the opportunity to network and communicate with other members, Lord, within this uh, country living community. And God, I just pray that you will please bless our time as we review uh, the journey that you've taken us on for the last nine years. I just pray that your voice may be heard above ours in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. So uh, we're going to open up with this statement from Dr. Vivek Murthy. He's the uh, American Surgeon General, and it says, being connected to others gives us a stake in more than our own interest. It expands those interests to include our whole community and thus increases our motivation to work together. And it reminds us that no homestead is an island. Because over the years, we have learned how important and valuable community is, not only to your personal lives, but to our homesteading life. And when it comes to our personal story, we're going to just take you through a journey about how different villages have truly impacted our existence right now and how we are just able to have a homestead, a 12-acre homestead, with our family able to homeschool and all those things. And we thank God for that, and that was all made possible by the village community. So, a little bit about our journey. We were both born and raised in Miami to loving parents, and uh, my parents, they, kind of, they gave me an incredible country living experience in the heart of the city. I'm eternally grateful to my parents, uh, Gide and Carmeline Pierre. Uh, so, they, they had a better living clinic down there, and so they knew the health message country living message, and so my summers were spent climbing mango trees in the backyard and uh, getting into some good trouble in the lake uh, behind us. And this was all within the city, and so we had this, I had this, grew up with this understanding that country living was an ideal setting for raising kids especially. And I grew up in the suburbs of Miami, and my parents were Adventists, so I was born in an Adventist home, but really didn't hear much about the country living experience until I met him. And I had no idea what, um, like, I just didn't know any of the terminology of country living. I was really not interested in it. I just thought, Sabbath, I know that, um, and that's it. 
And when he, when I met him, it was amazing just to know that there, there is a, I think it was Yuji Pines your family went to? Yes. Yes, Yuji mm -hmm. Pines, where they did the medical missionary um, track, and that was really interesting to us. And as you'll see, that's the exact track that we ended up following as well. Now, it's interesting. I, even though I grew up with this country living experience, I had no desire to live in the country. I was actually uh, more interested in, we were more worried about how to make money in the city. And uh, one day my wife picked up a very dangerous book <laughs> called Country Living. And uh, this was one of the quotes that motivated us to consider moving out to the country. It reads, but it is not God's will that his people shall, sell, shall, shall settle in the cities where there is constant turmoil and confusion. Their children should be spared this, for the whole system is demoralized by the hurry and rush and noise. The Lord desires his people to move into the country where they can settle on the land and raise their own fruit and vegetables, and where their children can be brought in direct contact with the works of God and nature. Take your families away from the cities is my message. And so when we, at the birth of our first uh, child, Gabrielle, um, I'm sure anyone who's a parent here knows that having a child changes everything. And uh, that's indeed what happened. Um, I began to consider what environment would I be raising her in. And that made a huge, that was huge motivation for me to consider moving out to the country. And another consideration we had to make was all of our family was in Miami. So my side of the family, his side of the family. And you know when you're just having a child, who wants to move away from family? That's mm -hmm. when you want to stay close to family, the grandparents and the uncles and aunties. Mm -hmm. And that was the exact moment that we decided we were going to leave <laughs> all of that and then just go in the middle of nowhere. And so that's how we came to Wildwood. Wildwood. <laughs> Yes. So we both had jobs in education. I was a third through fifth grade teacher in the Adventist Academy, and my husband was working for um, a college. And so we left all of that, and we said, in order to really know what country living is about, to get familiar with natural remedies and all those things, we need to learn some things. So we decided to come to Wildwood and take the medical missionary course. And boy, was that first year a learning experience for us. Uh, I, remember, I remember a couple of tears uh, shed during that time, especially since we had moved largely on faith. Uh, with savings, we moved and with the hopes of finding work here. And that was, uh, that was a challenge. <laughs> it was a challenge. Um, while I was doing the medical missionary program, he was working on the farm and he's never done that before. And so that was very interesting. We could show you a picture. Oops. That one of you and the, yeah, that is Gabby, our baby. She's 10 now. And when I look at these pictures, I'm just so baffled just how time has flown. But that's you, that's you in the garden. That is me. And this was almost, it'll be 10 years ago next year. And so to see how my daughter's grown up into the beautiful young lady that she is now and see this start where she's right there beside daddy planting in these raised beds. And it was right here on campus right that I got my first agricultural experience. I had never grown anything on my own before. And so it was kind of thrown into the fire, learn by doing basically. And if you are from Wildwood, you know that you get thrown into certain <laughs> jobs and you just got to learn how to do it. And the Lord has amazing lessons to teach you through that. So don't fight it. <laughs> but this is, this is how we actually started. This was our own little four by four garden that we started um, next to our mobile home just down the road from here. Um, and yeah, that's, that was all we were growing. And it was amazing. Uh, the help and materials came from people that I knew, we knew in the community. And so it was a huge help getting that support from others and learning how to do this thing on our own. And again, having Gabby right beside us to learn it all was incredible.
And we have to thank a lot of our Wildwood family. Gabby still calls, we, she has Wildwood uncles and aunties. And I see a couple of them here that have really helped us when we were, we were just young. And when I'd have to go to classes, some of my classmates who were in the advanced courses would watch my daughter for me while I was doing natural remedies or in hydrotherapy. So it was felt like such a wonderful village to be a part of. And that's why I say village is so important, not only in your family life, but in your spiritual life because that really spoke to us because if I didn't have that we better have been right back to Miami. Mm -hmm. And so at this time it was two years that we were here and again I, I as a provider really want to provide for my family and I graduated with a degree in biology and I was like surely I can find a job easy here in the country in Chattanooga. Boy was I wrong. Uh, we, I started at Dollar Tree <laughs> in Trenton. It was a humbling but learning experience, and eventually, I actually threw uh, someone that we knew at a church we were ministering in Chattanooga, New Life. I got to work for Advent Health later on. But it was a customer service job, and I was still looking for something more along the lines of a career. And so, uh, with that, the opportunity came to teach at Laurel Brook. And that was our next move. Mm -hmm. And Laura Brook is also a self-supporting um, missionary school. It's an academy in Dayton, Tennessee. And so my husband and I were deciding to teach. And they worked the schedule out because they're very family-oriented. Worked the schedule out so my husband could teach in the mornings while I watched our baby. And then I got to teach in the evenings the ESL classes. And he got to watch the baby. But uh, self-supporting ministry is no joke. You have to work, and you work, and even on the weekends, you have dean duty, you have nursing home duty, you have kitchen duty, you are doing all sorts of things, and some of y'all laughing, because you know, <laughs> you know, it is no joke. And so we were just really busy, and I needed community, and the community was busy. The village was busy doing things that needed to get done. And so that's when our next challenge came. I started to feel incredibly lonely. And when we moved to Laura Brook, the only house available was this one. And this was on Laura Brook Cemetery Road. <laughs> so this was a mile off campus, not mm -hmm. in the heart of campus, next to a cemetery. So, you know, I had very quiet neighbors. <laughs> and, you know, I just, I, I, I was feeling really lonely. And, you know, we, <laughs> we only had one car, so when he was on campus, and this wasn't walkable, this was a, quite a distance. So it wasn't safe to walk with my baby in a stroller. So if we were in the house, we were just in the house, and it was so quiet. And I started talking to like beavers and <laughs> squirrels because there was just nobody there. And I was like, God, we moved here for a village. Why don't we have a village? And you know, this is one of the most important lessons that the Lord has taught me that I think all of us on our Christian walk need to learn is that God, Jesus, is our village. Amen. It could just be you and Jesus. You will have everything. And he needed to make sure that I understood that because things, people will come, people will go. But I needed to be reassured that when I have Jesus, I have everything. When you have Jesus, you have everything. So Amen. sometimes we think a village needs to look like this, but sometimes it will just be you and Jesus in a room. And that is your village. Amen. So I want to read this quote that my mom shared to me. Um, my mom definitely heard all my cries, and I would call her in the middle of the night, and she sent me this beautiful, beautiful passage that says, stop counting how much money you have or do not have. Stop counting how many friends have pledged support. Stop counting how many family members have made donations. Stop counting how many likes you're getting on social media. Mm -hmm. Stop counting the number of options you have. Stop counting the square foot in your home. Stop counting the amount of school debt mm -hmm, you already have. Stop counting all the reasons why you shouldn't obey and go forth in the power of God. There will be a variety of occasions on the journey where the math doesn't add up. There is only one mathematical equation that counts. 
It is the solution to all of your problems. God plus a willing heart. Can everybody say it with me? Unprecedented unprecedented success. success. Amen. And that was the biggest lesson. So once we learned that, we got to work and we started learning. And so one thing, two things that to look for in any community is one, a place where you can be blessed, but also a place where you can be a blessing. And it's amazing how the two go hand in hand. So during this time after we learned that lesson, uh, we spent the next three years there learning as much as we could from this community while also giving back to the community. And so I was teaching uh, at the high school level uh, math, biology, and chemistry. And so I would learn how to make soap, how to make charcoal, and incorporate it into lessons because their whole idea was learning by doing. And so in blessing, we were also blessed. I also learned how to prune fruit trees from one of my high school students, which was a very special experience for me. And so I highly, one thing I think uh, is common to our journey is that we went from self-supporting ministry Wildwood to self-supporting ministry because we just wanted to learn and absorb as much as we could. And I think uh, it really benefited us to do so. And that's where we also learned about foraging. So we started foraging for our own mushrooms, and Laura Brook is a 100-plus acre campus. So we got to forage for chanterelle mushrooms and oyster mushrooms and shiitakes and almost made the mistake about eating a poisonous one. But then a brother saw us with a basket full of them and was like, what are you doing? Put that out. And we're like, oh, praise the Lord, we ran into you or else we would have died. So (laughs) it's just like... God is just so good in the way he brought us to people. Mm-hmm. And, and it was just a wonderful learning experience. And we really couldn't have learned all of that in just by ourselves if we were just going out in the middle of nowhere. And so we're so thankful for the experiences we had at Lorebrook. We also learned how to use tractors. You know, we've Mm. never did that before, and we hired people to cut our lawns in Miami. So, you know, that was awesome. And I learned how to can. I actually had friends in the area from different churches to come and teach us how to can tomato sauce and cucumbers. So that was a wonderful experience. Mm -hmm. And during this time, I don't know if you know how self-supporting ministries work, but you're given a stipend every month, and you've got to make that stretch. It was peanuts. (laughs) <laughs> and so it was, it was a struggle uh, making ends meet. No. And I remember, <laughs> and I remember uh, as a provider, I remember that worry coming up again. How am I going to provide for my family? And the verse, Psalm 34, verse uh, 4, kept coming up, which says, uh, I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. And so it's amazing the ways, many ways God blessed us during that time. But one incredible way was uh, we were staring at our stipend and staring at our expenses and wondering how we would make the two match. And at that time, we had met an amazing, God-fearing, loving couple, the Alonzo family. And out of the blue, they agreed to support us and sponsor us while we were there at Wildwood. And it actually made up for the difference and then some. And all I could say is to God be the glory. And so it was a real pleasure when we eventually left uh, Laurel Brook to be able to say, thank you so much. Would you pass this blessing on to another family? And so uh, it, every time that I'm tempted to hoard, uh, I often think of their example and how giving they were. And it inspires me to give to support. Amen. So um, I, I, I don't, I'm a little embarrassed about this part of the story because as we're talking about how great our experiences were in these different self-supporting ministries, uh, I got tired um, and we decided to leave the country, period. And we decided to go to Atlanta, Alpharetta, Georgia, and I said, you know what, I'm kind of done with the country life. We, we, we did our time. Now let's go back to the city and enjoy the conveniences. <laughs> I'd like to eat at a restaurant, you know, not a cafeteria. I'd, I'd like to get my nails done because I'm tired of them looking like they were in the garden all day, you know? <laughs> and it's just it's the truth. I, we got tired and we went to Alpharetta um, and um, yeah. And you weren't the only one. Uh, I also was looking to make more money uh, in providing for my family. And so we moved to Alpharetta, 
And it was amazing how even, even though that wasn't the ideal move according to what we knew, it was amazing how God still blessed us in our ignorance uh, at that time. And so I was able to teach at uh, Mount Pisgah Christian School, one of the top 100 Christian schools in the nation. And my, before we moved, I asked God specifically, God, please help me to teach only science that's the only thing I want to teach. And he blessed me with a job opportunity to teach biology, chemistry, and I also wanted to continue learning about agriculture. And the school was looking to develop a horticulture program for their high school students. And so I, uh, I was tasked with that, uh, that opportunity to create this horticulture program. And uh, I found it a tremendous blessing. Not only was I able to gain even more skills in agriculture, but I was also able to pass them on. And so here, uh, the students are building their own gar greenhouse, they're building their own raised beds, all from scratch, and it was a tremendous learning experience, even learning how to care for livestock, uh, care for chickens. And so I learned a tremendous amount here at this school. And it was very different from the experiences that we had um, because this was an affluent area with affluent parents and students who could afford at a drop of a dime to get whatever we needed. So we were feeling really nice. <laughs> and I was like, we've never experienced this before. I like this. And I'm telling you, when, it, when things get a little too easy, mm -hmm. be, be cautious. Yeah. That's taken from someone who's been there. Things were coming very easy. Money was coming very easy. Things were just very cool and awesome, except for our spiritual life. Mm -hmm. And that's where God really kind of pulled the, pulled the cord for us to let us know. Um, but if you want to talk about that. Right. So, uh, sorry, I forgot to mention, we also, in this uh, horticulture program, we developed... Uh, we produce enough food to not only source the cafeteria, but also a local uh, food, com food bank from our community service there. And so it was amazing getting to know community members, and I made uh, lifelong friends here at this school. And again, even with all those benefits, we were still, there was something tugging at us saying, you're not quite where I want you to be. Yeah. All right. Yep. And we st honestly, we stopped going to church for a while as well, um, because if you know, if you've lived in the city, there are festivals, and when do they happen? On Sabbaths and on the weekends, and there's just so much to do. And so we started to get tempted to go to those festivals. Oh, we're not going to buy anything. We're just going to see what's mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. You know, and it started, their temptation was there and the temptation was real. And that's when we really had to get back to reading the word, really take a look at where God has led us and remember those things and make decisions and obey. Because a lot of times when we say, oh, it's so many things is a struggle. We're struggling. Oh, it's a struggle. The struggle really is delayed obedience. Mm -hmm. And we were delaying our obedience to the call that God has put on our heart. And so we had to stop. And what really made us stop, and I really believe this was God, was one Friday evening, we were having worship in our apartment. Now, this apartment was next to the school. It was in a very affluent area of Atlanta. And very beautiful area, wonderful one Friday night we were having worship and there were gunshots, boom, boom, right next door. And my husband immediately, like he's a city boy, so he was like, get on the ground. <laughs> so <laughs> we got on the ground and I was like, I'm not used to that. I'm from the bougie side of Miami. So I was like, what was that? I don't know. <laughs> and so he's like, everybody just stay down, stay down. And then the police came and apparently there was a domestic dispute. Mm -hmm. And my husband was like, we're leaving as soon as this school year is done, we're gone. And it was like fighting couples just kept happening all around us. And it, all of a sudden, it just changed. Before, mm. what was such a beautiful, quiet, affluent area just changed automatically. And it was like God was saying, get out of there. Mm. And my husband, the high priest of the home, made the decision that we were leaving. And it was a hard decision to make because this is more money than I had ever earned in my lifetime. And so to leave that was a... <laughs> a hard decision, but that event, more so than any, it 
it, we started studying after that. It was almost like God had pulled the wool over our eyes that the city had held for us. And so we began to see the forest for the trees and see the influence on now two kids that we had had at that time, later three. Mm -hmm. um, so we were like, this is not the best environment for my family. And so on faith, at the end of the school year, we moved out uh, to Sweet Home, Alabama, where we were we are now, and that was a little over a year ago. And I remember asking, I, I journal. Anybody here journal? Yes, amen. It is an amazing way to chronicle your experience. Um, so I was just journaling, and I remember asking God, okay, I would like to transition to a career in agriculture. And by this time, I was still getting paid during the summer for teaching, but I was looking for a agriculture-related opportunity and wondering, okay, how long is this going to take? I'm not trying to dip into our savings. What's going to happen, God? And so what we pray, I prayed that prayer on faith, and I prayed it with my wife. Within a week of leaving the school, I was, uh, allow, I was able to work at an uh, organic farm five minutes down the road from us. And so God is good, and that let me know that ultimately, even though uh, I am the provider for our family, he is ultimately the provider for our family. Amen. And where we moved to was my parents' homestead, who they were living on their 12-acre homestead in Alabama for three years. And so they opened their doors to us, and that's our multi-generational village there. And if you are a grandparent, it is such a blessing to have your grandchildren near you. And if you are a parent, it is a, such a blessing to have parents. My parents are both retired educators, so uh, homeschool was easier. <laughs> and I praise the Lord. My mom taught both of my children how to read, and they can read at sixth grade levels right now, thanks to my mother. My father is such an amazing person. My boys just absolutely follow him all over and they know how to use every single tool and know the names of those tools all because of grandpa and it's such a blessing you know I did tell my girlfriend you know I was t we were praying together and she said hey um how is it for your husband to live with your parents you know how does that work you want to answer <laughs> <laughs> with them in the room sure. <laughs> And it is an extreme blessing. I call him Pop. My kids Paul call him Pop Pop. And it has been an incredible ble blessing. He's been a Jethro to me, honestly. Uh, a mentor, a counselor, a help, an aid. And I extremely appreciate. They are my family. And they are my parents. Amen. So this has been such an amazing opportunity for us to work hand in hand. This is us collecting corn together that my dad planted and my husband and my dad built the hoop house together and we just really had, just have a great time learning from each other. And honestly, uh, gr there's a statistic I heard on NPR that says that grand, um, older, the elderly live a lot longer when there are children around. And so I hope mm. that my parents live very, very long. Amen. <laughs> so call it a clan, call it a network, call it a tribe, call it a family, whatever you call it, whoever you are, you need one. And you need one because you are human. And we are so, so happy. And it, we do see it as a privilege because not everybody can live with their in-laws. You know, I, I know some of you don't even want to see them on Thanksgiving, let alone <laughs> uh, have a homestead with them. So, you know, we just really take, take it, take it as a, such a huge blessing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so during this time, uh, we had been working and country living comes with its fair share of sh struggles. One, of one, one desire we've always had is for a house, a house of our own. We were living uh, in the same house with our parents, and we were really praying and hoping for a house of our own, but we did not know where the means would come from. And so I foolishly, I remember thinking at that time, I, I need to make money. I need to, maybe Atlanta, I can commute back and forth long distance. Oh, that would have been a big mistake. But I was thinking crazy at that time. And I remember uh, wondering, oh man, 
should I move us back? And thankfully, we were studying at that time, and I remember you brought a quote to mind. It says, do not dig up in doubt what you planted in faith. I'll say that one more time. Do not dig up in doubt what you planted in faith. And so we had decided to move based studying and by faith. We had decided to move to the country, and we were going to stick with it. And so when we decided that, we started making bold prayers, yes. bold faith-based requests. And one of those requests was for a house of our own. We made that request as a humble request, not as an ultimatum, God provide this, or we're moving back to the, country, to the city. We made it humbly asking God to provide, and he showed up abundantly and above. And we, my parents have 12 acres, so there was a lot that was full of tall weeds and a, I don't know what you call it, bush hogger needed to clear it. We needed a, we cleared yeah. a spot. Uh, mm -hmm. We bush hog a good spot where we did not, we were wondering, are we going to put a house here? Um, and we actually staked out the area and said, this is where our house is going to go. And every day we'd I remember you children. and I would go, yeah. and then we'd also take the children to pray. pray over that area. Yep, and we would just walk that area every day and pray over it. We took the measurements from online about what a double wide mobile home would look like and how the measurements. We went and staked and measured it out, and then we said that's where our home is going to be, and our children would pray, and we'd, put, we'd say verses, and we'd claim it. And sure enough, in a miraculous way, mm -hmm. God gave us a double wide mobile home that was new because I, I don't think I could have done an old one, honestly. <laughs> uh, my bougie self could not. And so, but it was new and, and it was just amazing the way God brought that. That's a whole different story. But mm -hmm. we got a mobile home. And uh, you forgot, for, amen. And you forgot an adjective. It was affordable also. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking this would be, our home would be a three year, five year uh, plan where we'd raise up to get it. And within the same year, by October, uh, we had the home moved onto the property. And then came the next challenge, how do you connect all the utilities? And this is where a village, a community is so important. I had no experience how, on how to uh, connect a water pipe. Did not know how to uh, tie in the septic lines to feed the septic tank. I did not know how to put a meter box and wire a meter box. Almost got electrocuted. <laughs> for, uh, yes, right, for um, the power company to come through. But thankfully, we had neighbors and friends that knew exactly what we needed to learn. And I was able to learn from them, and I'm looking forward to taking what I learned and passing that on to someone else that needs help. And again, that goes back to two principles of any community. It's a place where you can be blessed as well as a blessing. And if you take a look at this picture, that's my dad and my husband down there connecting the water, the sewage line, right? Septic, yep. The septic line. And my father was recovering from a knee surgery just a month prior. And he was down there under the house helping us. So mm -hmm. love you, daddy. <laughs> He's awesome. He's awesome. Mm -hmm. And then we have our house. Our house was totally set up. Our kids were so excited. And this was just two weeks before Christmas. So we were like, this is your Christmas gift. Yes. And I got my Christmas gift early because one of my prayers was, God, please help us to get into the house yes. and have heat available. Because <laughs> uh, we know how these northern winters can go, even though we're in the south. And... <laughs> <laughs> But we're from Florida, so... Yeah, you guys are north to us. We're north to you. <laughs> yeah. And so it was a blessing because he answered in a tremendous way where we not only had all the utilities uh, connected just in time for the first real frost and the first real cold, but we also had heat throughout our winter. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. And so that's when we really got started into full-time gardening. We got our sweet potato fall crop. We started doing squash. And we just really threw ourselves headfirst into the garden. And we had such a fun time. It was, it was really great. And I kept that prayer, though, in my heart. Lord, show us a village. Please bring us a village, a village where we can be blessed and be a blessing. And God answered. Our village started growing. 
So what you see here is actually a little homeschool academy my mom started <laughs> where she was homeschooling our neighbors. And our neighbors actually moved around the same time we did, and they are also at dentist. And they had two children who were around our children's age, mm -hmm. and it was just so amazing. And she, the mother, Nayeli, is my BFF. We pray together, we claim God's word together, we share our challenges about country living together, and we uphold each other. There's a verse in Malachi that says that um, the, the, when friends get together, the Lord listens, and that's the, that's the friendships that we have. And so that was our prayer, and God truly blessed. Oh, and it, that picture, do you want to talk about that? Oh, that's right. So uh, I'm teaching science still to uh, my kids in our homeschool association here, and this is me teaching them soil blocking. And that was a tremendous opportunity to just, again, not only be blessed, but be a blessing and continue maintaining those skills. And it's wonderful because while we get to teach um, her, her children, our neighbors get to come over our house and they learn some things. And then our children get to go over her house and learn because she's a great cook and a great baker. So they get to learn all of that from her. So we get to switch off and on. And it's been such a blessing above and ab beyond what we could have asked for. And if you're seeing a theme here, it's community is very important. We're not meant to move out and isolation is not the goal. Isolation is what we might have to experience, where we all will have to stand alone, but during this time, how much of a blessing it is to be able to not only bless others, but be a blessing. Mm -hmm. And our children actually were able to start their own little industry, so um, on the property, on the 12-acre homestead, it actually was a blueberry farm before my parents purchased it. And those blueberries were overrun. So my husband, after learning a lot from Wildwood and Laura Brook, was able to clear and pretty much rehabilitate over a thousand blueberry trees. Yes, and we have so many blueberries right now. <laughs> That's why I didn't come today, because we were picking so many, because we're selling them, and the children started their own stand, and we opened up the village even more, because now we get to know neighbors that, honestly, I thought were racist. They actually came, and they're not racist. <laughs> and so I'm so happy. Because honestly, some of those trucks with flags, they come by and they pull the window down to see the kids. And you know, like I'm from Miami, so I was like, oh, hold up, you know. And I get in front of the kids, and I'm like, what you, what you need, what you need. And they're like, hello. And I'm like, oh, hi. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're good, we're good. Uh, here's your blueberries. And so, <laughs> honestly, you know, you, you, you have those moments in the country, um, um, and I'm just so thankful that God has put a hedge of protection. Pray that Amen. prayer. A hedge of protection over your family, and our children able to sell blueberries, and it was pretty great. They made a little profit. They're saving up for something special for themselves, and it's just been a wonderful way to see our children just take part in the whole homesteading um, experience with us. And it's been an amazing way to bring it full circle because starting with our, our daughter uh, almost nine years ago, that was our big motivation for moving out to the country. And so to see all three of our, our children thriving in this country environment, um, despite its challenges and its struggles, was a tremendous blessing to both of us. And so something that's just been so big on our hearts was the whole idea in Galatians 6 verse 2 that says carry each, other bur each other's burdens. And in this way, you're fulfilling the law of Christ. In homesteading and country living, it is a, it, there's a true burden there. Going out to weed in 90 degree weather and trying to build up a hoop house by yourself doing a lot of gardening, when the garden starts to get pest, all those things are very burdensome in the country living experience. But we have friends in our church now who are also just breathing life into us. We had a wonderful conversation one Sabbath with some friends who are here. <laughs> and we're so excited that they're here to support us. And um, we were just getting real, real with them about how this is hard and in you know when the pests take out your whole peach peach crop mm -hmm. like yo that's <laughs> no joke 
And I was depressed and I was upset. And when the only times we can have date nights is going an hour to the nearest town and then a trip to the nearest store takes 40 minutes, all those things. And you have little children that you have to pile in the car for that 40 minute drive. And if you are a parent, say amen. <laughs> you know how that is. Um, and like snacks all over the car. It's just, yo, <laughs> somebody knows what I mean. And so it, it, it gets very burdensome, but man, I just want to tell the Steubing family, which you will hear from tomorrow night, that they have, they might not know how much they've ministered to our yes. family, but just to have a church community of people like that and of Gabriel and Vonell, who also have experienced um, the homesteading life, who breathe in life to us as well, all those families and communities have held us together. Mm -hmm. And they pray for us in such a specific way that m m when those prayers are answered, you know somebody was um, putting your name um, to God. And so it's just been so awesome that we feel the need to also bring people's names to the Lord and just pray for them and to carry those burdens. And that's really our mission. Um, we actually started a YouTube channel so that we can share our journey with others. And so if you guys don't know, we have a YouTube channel called The Foraging Family Homestead, and we share our journey. And right now, we just saw we're almost at 10,000 subscribers, and it's been really nice to share just the journey of country living, the challenges and the joys, um, all for God's glory. All right. And so again, two major things to look for in a community are... Uh, an opportunity to be blessed, but an opportunity to also be a blessing and carry each other's burdens. Yeah. So um, just a story about how wonderful God is in community and in a village. Our children love people. And as we are homeschooling them, we thought we really need to be part of a homeschool co-op. In the country, where are you going to get that? And so we thought, oh, there's not really going to be um, a co-op for us. And if there is, the next nearest one was Huntsville, which from us is two hours away. And there's some in a different county, which the time difference in Alabama and Georgia is different. So that would have made things very difficult. So we, our neighbor decided, you know what, we're going to create our own little co-op. And it was awesome that we just started with our families. And then we saw when we went to the library that there are other families who homeschool too. They're not Adventist, they're not Christian, but they homeschool. And we actually got to go to a farm, the Mountain Sun Farm, which my husband was working for, and pick strawberries. And just to watch our children talk about Jesus to children that knew nothing of him and we didn't have to say a word, was so powerful that that reaffirmed our decision to stay in the country. And it reaffirms my, my, my conviction and our conviction every time we see our children do that. And so it's, it's like, don't give up. Don't mm. give up and, and really just obey. Obey whatever the Lord is telling you, just obey it. It's been such an amazing experience to grow in that faith and those experiences and those trials are for our good, to bring the perseverance and to drive us to our knees to the Lord. So it's been, it's been a wonderful experience. We've had a lot of struggles, and we are up to our knees in cucumbers, <laughs> and I really don't know what to do with them, but it's just amazing how in every little thing, God is just working for our good through a village. And so if you're here at this uh, Growing Together Southeast Conference, I encourage you to connect with each other. You never know where those connections are going to lead or how somebody you meet may need to depend on you or you might need to depend on them. And so it's an amazing opportunity to make those connections and grow those connections. And so uh, with that, would you please bow your heads and close your eyes with us for prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you once again for not only the uh, being our God and our guide, being our ultimate provider, Heavenly Father, when we have no one else. But we also thank you for the people that you bring along our, in our journey, Heavenly Father, to support us and those people that we can minister to also. God, we thank you for being our all and our everything. I pray that you please be with us as we continue through this conference. I pray that your Holy Spirit may be here. I pray that the connections may be wholesome and that we will 
truly carry each other's burdens as we move forward in this experience. I pray thee in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.